Hello and welcome. Today I will be talking about thumb rings. Uh, this will be a guide when you buy your thumb rings so that you get the right ring for you. Now, oftentimes when people come to me to buy thumb rings, the common question they ask is, what is the best ring? Now this is really subjective because in their mind, the question they have refers to which is the best material. And let me tell you this, material plays a very small part. It does play a part, but it's a very small part. It is maybe 10% of the overall decision to buy your ring. The rest of that is about design. Okay, so let's go with the material first. So over here, we have metal rings, we have bone, we have horn, and I'm missing wood. This here is plastic. Now, I've arranged it in this way, in terms of uh, from the most durable to the least durable. Each of these has advantage. Let's begin with metal rings. Now, metal rings, they are usually casted or CNC machine. So the rings of the same model, of the same size, from the same maker, all of them are identical. So if you bought it from some maker or seller and you love that ring, okay? So one day, supposedly, you misplace your ring and you needed an identical replacement. You can go back to the same seller and buy the same model, same size, and you don't have to retrain yourself to the new ring. Okay? They are also more durable. Um, in comparison to the others, this is probably the most durable. Horn, uh, sorry, this is bone. Bone, I would rate as the second most durable. Now, bone, so far I have no issues. However, I'm told, I'm told that bone can be brittle. So if you do stupid things like throwing it on something hard or try to smash it, it can crack. So, so far I have no problem. I don't do anything stupid to my rings. Uh, number three, okay, rated number three, I will consider horn. Uh, horn is actually slightly soft. It is slightly elastic compared to uh, the bone. So horn, if you use a heavy poundage, actually this, as you use it, it deforms slightly. The, the shape deforms slightly. Um, that would actually leads to a little bit of a lack of confidence. So to compensate for that, if you use a heavier poundage, your ring should be made thicker to avoid deformation. I don't have wood, so I'll talk about plastic. Uh, plastic, well, as you would expect, would be the least durable. Sometimes you get fairly good plastic and they can last you quite a while, even with some reasonably heavy bow, maybe 50 pounds. But it depends. It is also possible that you get a really crappy plastic that would work up to like 30 pounds and it breaks within like two months. It's possible. So, um, well, the advantage of plastic, they're fairly cheap. So oftentimes, if you are buying your first ring, Go with plastic because what happens is you will outgrow the ring. Your thumb will grow and about one or two months, you will outgrow your first ring. So why spend so much? Buy something cheap, plastic. And then for your second ring, once you outgrow the first ring, you can choose if you like horn, go for it. But design matters. It's not about the material or bone or metal. Up to you. Talking about design. Alright, so this morning I have a customer who came to my shop to buy this ring. 
Now, this is actually a horn ring. Right? So after he tested it, he also asked to test the vermil metal ring. And he made a decision to go with the vermil metal ring. So why did he not buy the horn ring, which he originally came for? So it's about design. Like I said just now, 10% is the material, the remaining is the design. The design matters. This one and this one, it looks identical, doesn't it? It looks very similar, right? Very similar. But when you test it, there is a difference. This one here is comfortable. The string doesn't slip off. This one here, the string felt like slipping off, which leads him to tightening his thumb, and therefore it's not as comfortable. Design matters. In fact, let me show you. Two of this ring, all right, two of this ring. You can see that this one here has a very long tongue or tab. This one here is very short. This one here, the material are thick. This one here is very thin. But both of these are the same size. So these two actually came from the same maker, same batch. Uh, and we are getting two very inconsistent products from the same guy. So, of course, I'm not revealing who actually made this, but the maker makes a difference. Some maker, his product are consistent, quality are consistent. This is an example of an inconsistent production. Sometimes he likes it this way, sometimes he likes it this way, and I, have to, I, I do not know what to expect in the next batch. This is not very good rings. Okay, so again, just because this is horn doesn't make it good rings. Design matters. Alright, so now I'm going to go through some different styles of ring. So, style number one. This one here is a Vermil Classic model. It has what we call a string guard here okay string guard and the string sits here and prevented by the string guard from going into your thumb so it doesn't hurt okay it doesn't it doesn't cause the string to run into your thumb and pinches your skin okay see this is how it looks like uh, let me demonstrate it with a bow Hopefully you can see, I'm not going to hook it, just, just showing you where it's supposed to hook, okay? And in fact, this design, the classic model, is very easy to learn because even if you make mistakes, let's say you overhook too deep, well, it's protected, it doesn't run into your skin, or you're too little, then you put a less deep hook, it works overly deep hook well it still works it doesn't hurt you so this is something that is very easy for you to learn uh, especially if you are still new to archery uh, it's also very comfortable doesn't hurt you uh, however for rings that are easy to learn usually it will affect in terms of uh, the cleanliness of release the release is not as clean or not as perfect not as quick Okay, uh, but it's comfortable, it's easy to learn. The next one, this is the Vermil Victory model. It is actually very similar to this, the classic, but it has a cutout here. Okay, the cutout here. When we view from the side, some people may think that it doesn't have a string guard. Well, it doesn't have a prominent string guard, but it still has a low-profile string guard. 
this caller here acts as a string guard where the string will sit right at this transition between the caller and the tab and it will not run into your thumb okay so it looks as if there is no guard but it actually has it will not run into your skin so let me de demonstrate that as you can see it has a place that will naturally sit and it will run away okay okay now even if you hook slightly deeper it's fine it doesn't run into your skin or slightly shallow it's fine it doesn't run into your skin so that's why i said that it has a guard just that not as uh, prominent as the classic some might like this one because the um, the cutout here allows you to feel the string a little bit it doesn't pinch your thumb it just allows you to feel the string a little bit um, maybe I talk about this one instead of this first this one here is a uh, a ring with also a guard it has a string guard see there there's a guard right this is the guard to protect from running in the skin the string sits right here now what's the difference between this and the other two this has a hook it hooks the string whereas this one it doesn't have a hook this one re literally replaces the shape of your thumb and when you bend it back it holds the string on behalf of your thumb same with this but this one it actually has a hook a hook is responsible in hooking the string okay, it actually hooks the string even when your angle here is not really uh, not correct it is quite open the hook holds the string okay so this kind will hold your string more securely compared to this and because it holds more securely you can choose you can actually choose to hook it with a uh, less deep hook a more shallow hook or to hook it deep both are fine i can use a deep hook like this it's fine because it has a guard to protect the string from running the, my skin you can also open it a little bit more where the hook will prevent the string from accidentally losing losing as in release uh, so you can use in both ways a more shallow hook or a deeper hook however this kind of ring because it uses a hook to hold the string and the hook is very small it's a very tiny triangle at the end here very tiny triangle so when you initially use this ring it may feel a little bit insecure because you have no idea uh, where the string is whether it's sitting securely here or not uh, it has a slightly steeper learning curve not difficult right now this one here is what we consider as a guardless ring okay it doesn't have a string guard so this one here has a steep learning curve is not like impossible to use uh, you you it will take some time uh, to get used to it so um, I don't recommend this to beginners but if you you have archer experience and you want to challenge go for this one the godless ring provide a quicker hook and quicker release whereas this one you need to find a position to hook the string the rest of this also the same anything with guard you need to actually find make sure that it sits in the right place I right? just not actually actually hook too far back I have to find the place all right in the case of a guardless ring by design it doesn't have to find anything just hook and pull so the overall shooting uh, process is a lot faster um, traditionally this will prefer for horseback archery when you need to shoot a lot faster this will prefer okay you can hook a lot faster and pull and also release a lot quicker however because it doesn't have a guard if you hook too deep 
okay, too deep. I'm not sure if you can see, but the, the, the string is driven into my thumb and it hurts. It's pressing into my skin, okay? At this point, it's hurt, okay? It's pressing into the skin. So if you're doing too deep, it will, it will hurt. If you do too shallow, it slip off. You have to find the right angle in which it doesn't hurt, okay? This process take a bit of time. Uh, you need to use it for a while. Initially, start off with some low poundage. Get get your confidence with the with the ring, and then slowly build up. So I don't recommend it for beginners, but if you have archery experience and you want a uh, a more efficient ring design, you can go with a guardless ring. Uh, Vermil actually has two types of guardless ring. Okay, maybe three types. Uh, this is the Lotus model. This one here is designed for a deep hook. Yeah, deep hook, uh, guardless ring. So I, I actually hooked this one with the exact same technique as the other three here. It's a deep hook, but it doesn't hurt. It is designed to actually uh, hold the string in a deep hook position and without going into your thumb. Okay, doesn't hurt. Now, if you prefer a shallow hook, go for a vermil Turkish ring. Uh, another option would be the Manchu ring. Um, I don't use the Manchu ring, but you can go with the Turkish. The Turkish is flatter on the top here, which allows you to use the uh, shallow hook. So it is a little bit different. If you try to use a deep hook on the Turkish, it will hurt. You have to use a shallow hook on the Turkish model. So now, whichever ring that you decide to buy, right, take my advice, don't be stingy. Seriously, don't be stingy. Uh, if you want to save money and you go for cheap, sometimes it is not worth it because Let's say you go for metal ring, but because it's, it's a cheaper product from a different maker and you go for it because it's, you, you want to save money, right? But what if the product sucks? It's a waste of your money, okay? So I always advise to go with a maker in which you trust the design has to be good, proven, all right? You can have reviews from, I don't know, some uh, well-known people or your friends, or you have actually tried it yourself. If you know they make good design rings, go for their stuff, right? It's okay to pay more, but don't buy shitty rings. If you buy shitty rings, even if it's very cheap, it's a waste of money. But let me tell you this, my new toy, this is my, my new toy, okay, it's a moose bone ring. I pay the equivalent of two vermil brass ring. That's a lot of money to pay. I know I could get, get a moose bone ring from many other makers. I could even get it a horn uh, from other makers around the world, but I decided to pay more than two brass ring for one of this. Uh, reason being, I trust that maker will get me the right design. There is no point to buy a ring that is wrongly designed, doesn't work for you, waste of money.